in this sustainable agriculture or plantation food cultivation as long as it is a practice a conservation principle and use the appropriate uh, appropriate technology uh, technology i think uh, yeah from my uh, view uh, uh, giving uh, the increasing need for a, a network or cooperation between district and provinces i think to tackle uh, some issues of the uh, in the uh, sub national uh, level uh, i think this is the uh, the common understanding or uh, should be delivered to the uh, the local uh, governance i think uh, it is very uh, very uh, important do i think yes and then do the wide scope of activities in the uh, pitland management the implementation will involve many institutions this is require uh, effective inter uh, institutional cooperation and coordination so i think the, uh, it is the 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 common understanding and then uh next please and then the <coughs> three things have been pressured by all uh, uh, parties relative to the uh, parties in since uh, i think 2000 uh, 2000 and then in, it is about the in order to gain the function and then the the natural resources of peatland. It is uh, necessary to have a balance between aspect conservation and sustainable use of this uh, area. Uh, this is condition can uh, be made based on the identification of the potency and existing obstacle with the approach with also the balance the needs of the conservation and uh, utilization. I think uh, as uh, I mentioned before with the criteria indicator. I think we we have to see with the uh, with this uh, situation under uh, yeah under under pressure to the local uh, government. Also uh, regarding the management and natural resources, including peatland, this is cannot uh, be carried out by ten parties only. I think the 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 rules not only uh, uh, give for uh, for the local government but also for all part uh, for all uh, parties. So, uh, yeah, uh, for me, uh, <coughs> cooperation between institutions is uh, the key. Uh, the, yeah, the current institutional frame. Uh, at the yeah, both uh, the central and uh, sub national level must be able to work together to increase commitment to sustainable peatland development. Uh, I think each uh, institution is uh, expected to develop participation uh, and then uh, work with the local uh, community with the community empowerment approaches, decentralization. Uh, and many system, uh, many human system development. I think, uh, yeah, uh, what uh, I see the, uh, the cooperation between institutions in the uh, people and management, it is uh, it's be synergized uh, and mutually reinforcing cooperation while still provi uh, providing the uh, work unit with independence in managing their uh, perspective uh, of the sector or the field. Um, cooperation uh, between institutions is uh, expected for the foster uh, division of the rules for each uh, institution in the order to prevent duplication or program or even a struggle for a role between institutions. Uh, so uh, this is the... Uh, when we talking about the governance, I think we, uh, I think if we also link to the criteria indica indicator, I think we have to uh, see the the the, the reality is uh, institution. So uh, I think uh, next uh, to translate this element uh, and governance component into measurable indicators for. Uh, uh, jurisdictional sustainable call for some general con, uh, consideration. 
I think it is uh, my view is very uh, important to see the finding a balance across different sustainability dimension, economic, social, environmental, and good governance, including transparency issues. And uh, I think both in synergy and addressing that of across this, this uh, dimension. Uh, yeah, some some disease now uh, trying to have the uh, jurisdictional approach, and then there are uh, some areas also using the stepwise approach. It is combining outcome and the process indicators. Uh, so if we see the uh, CNI, what Pa Harry mentioned uh, in the beginning, that it is. Uh, I think the, 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 we will see the, the balancing uh, the balancing of the each uh, aspect. Uh, and then also being the audience oriented with indicators that are uh, relevant and meaningful to various target group, including national government, district government, uh, trade partners, and consumers. Uh, in this regard, I think we also we have to see the new, uh, uh, new policies of the uh, undang undang uh, cipta kerja new policies i think we also we have to the what the the, uh, the the orientation by uh, national government also looking at the feasibility including by taking into the account data ability and uh, using the different uh, using uh, efficient i think this is still our homework about the data and then also about the how the uh, 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 method to collect uh, to collect the data, and then also now we are uh, also need in the uh, baseline data uh, and uh, in baseline data in the field, and then we have to check because we with uh, I think the data is. is a very uh, key, also key aspect, if we uh, looking for uh, for this uh, criteria indicator for the government, and then check the all uh, government document, so then and add, uh, and add that. And then the last, I think the next map, uh, and then I think the potential criteria and associated with the indicator can be useful in the monitoring and uh, assessment of the plan. I think, yeah, uh, some uh, 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 indicator, I think already mentioned by, by Pak Heri. The first is improving the participation. Uh, I think uh, participation, profitability, and productivity of the smallholder in hyper commodity supply chains. I think uh, now we have to open the uh, uh, open eyes because uh, in the pit land because the there are the farmer also they have a, a potential commodity to be uh, uh, developed. Uh, also, reducing social conflict and protect, uh, protecting human rights, including labor and indigenous land rights. I think this is this is all issues, but still struggling to have the. Uh, solution for the uh, all the, the, the com, uh, conflict, typology conflict. Uh, the third is reducing deforestation and forest degradation in high conservation value and high carbon. I think the, in the last is in the last we now uh, also uh, the government still, uh, still ha uh, drafting the new regulation about the uh, this uh, issue. And then the fourth is stock area, including primary and uh, secondary forest, as well as, well as uh, it land uh, in the governance, uh, in the governance in the local or uh, sub-national governance. This is, uh, uh, it's still uh, we uh, struggling uh, working with the local uh, government with the jurisdictional approach to have the uh, clearly the, the data and the, the, the area. And then the last is uh, reducing fire and hedge. Uh, I think it's that pa, pa, uh, pa Harry, my uh, my view, my perspective. If we see the 
uh, the role of the local government with the facilitating uh, sustainable land management. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Ibu Dia. Very interesting part. So the uh, speaker will be uh, Pak Haswi Berliani. He will be talking about regulatory and policy measure to support pitland restoration. Silakan, Pak Haswi. Uh, thank you, Pak Harry. Uh, I will try to share the screen. Okay, please, Pak. that already appear yes okay uh, thank you uh, professor Harry uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, webinar participants very good afternoon uh, first uh, I would like to introduce uh, myself uh, my name is Hasbi Berliani uh, I work for uh, Kemitraan uh, an organization uh, at the national level, uh, working on uh, uh, promoting uh, multi-stakeholder partnership in uh, promoting uh, good governance. Uh, I would like to thank uh, C4, Pak Daniel Murdiarso and colleges in C4 uh, to give uh, me uh, to share our experience uh, in these sessions. Uh, Kemitraan uh, in was three years uh, working closely with the uh, BRG uh, on uh, uh, empowering uh, the local community and uh, village governments through the uh, state plan uh, care village, the uh, Sapaduli Gambut programs, uh, one of the main uh, programs of the uh, BRG. Uh, through this uh, webinar, I think. Uh, uh, we know that uh, pitland is very important uh, to support uh, our government's uh, priority programs uh, in, uh, to protect uh, the pitland, uh, to handle the fire, and also to achieve uh, the global and international commitments uh, through NDC and uh, another uh, climate change uh, agreement. Uh, we not participants, we certainly know that uh, in addition to the biophysical, economic and social aspect, uh, the government uh, aspect is one of the important aspects also, uh, as uh, explained by uh, Daniel Mordiato in the first uh, sessions. Uh, this is very important in realizing uh, the target of pitland restorations or uh, towards uh, sustainable pitland management. Uh, when we talk uh, about the governance, uh, I think uh, there are some uh, principles. Uh, I think uh, we are familiar with this, but uh, from my view, uh, from the six uh, principles, uh, at the minimum, transparency, participants, and accountability uh, would be uh, very important uh, from my side. It is uh, the big uh, or the main uh, principle that we have to consider in uh, in uh, in uh, achieving good pitland uh, governance. In addition uh, to these uh, basic principles, also we uh, we know that uh, there is uh, some uh, three pillars, main pillars uh, in uh, getting the good uh, governance, uh, namely governments, agencies, uh, private sectors, and civil society. Uh, civil society also includes uh, CSOs, academicians, local community, media, indigenous people, and etc. Uh, but another uh, important issue uh, if we talk about the governance uh, is uh, the aspect of the govern governance. Uh, the governance not only talking about the policy and regulations, but uh, it is very important to see 
uh, the institutions framework, uh, planning, and also decision making processes. Uh, and also, it is very important to know uh, about the implementation and enforcement. So, uh, in in some cases, we have uh, many policy and regulations, uh, many institutions, but lack of the implementation and enforcement. So, uh, the good governance should, uh, includes uh, the three main aspect, uh, the policy regulation, institution, and decision-making process, but also uh, for the implementation and, and enforcement. So uh, if we talk about the uh, criteria and indicators uh, in uh, pit plan restorations, uh, uh, I think a, pro a comprehensive criteria and indicators uh, would be very important in guiding us to realize the good pit plan governance, including pit plan monitoring. Uh, but uh, we have to consider uh, the basic principles uh, in, in creating the criteria and indicators, and also ensuring an effective engagement of all stakeholders in the process, and also to cov covering uh, all aspects, uh, as I mentioned, policy uh, regulations, institutions, and also its implementation and enforcement. So from this uh, point of view, from our, uh, from our experience, uh, I propose to, uh, as requested by the committee, uh, I propose some uh, criteria and indicators. Uh, I try to put uh, some uh, criteria and also uh, uh, indicators uh, that can be useful uh, in, in this presentation, but uh, indicators, I try to uh, propose uh, some uh, or more uh, specific uh, formulations, uh, but uh, from the from the main session, I think uh, some indicators also can be adjusted to, to, to the generic uh, formulation and then we can also adjust it to the more specific uh, if needed uh, the first criteria uh, i propose is stakeholder participation in policy regulation formulation and development so uh, some indicators i propose uh, like a number of public effective public consultations organized together and accommodate input from all stakeholders at all levels so if the government uh, propose uh, initiate some regulations, uh, it is important to know uh, how about the effective or, uh, public consultation they organize uh, from national, subnational, and local level. Uh, I also propose another indicators of a number of stakeholders, representative, attending public consultation. It is very important uh, because uh, we have to consider uh, to ensure that uh, all stakeholders from indigenous peoples, from marginalized peoples, from the local peoples uh, can, uh, can participate in the processes, not only from the national and uh, the government uh, sides. The third indicator I propose is availability of space and procedure mechanism for public participation. The, uh, it should be uh, 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 endorsed or uh, supported by uh, some procedure or mechanisms. The second uh, criteria I propose is transparency. Uh, 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 transparency in providing information and progress and ensuring also access for all stakeholders to that information. Uh, we have, uh, uh, we, uh, in, like in Indonesia, I think, uh, uh, the Ministry of Environment and Forestry and also BRG already already uh, try to make uh, available information uh, of uh, the progress of uh, pitland restoration. Uh, but it is also uh, need to uh, uh, to make uh, regulations also that ensuring easy, fast, and cheap access to the information. Uh, the second indicator, I think, it is very important to ensure that. Uh, all stakeholders can get uh, easy, fast, and cheap access to the information. 
And then the third criteria I, I propose is public accountability of the government agencies and related stakeholders on performance of peatland restorations. The first indicator is availability of information uh, on performance of government agencies and other stakeholders. Other stakeholders, uh, I, I mean that uh, it is uh, possible also uh, for private sector that, uh, ma that manage the concession and also they have a mandate to uh, pit plan restoration. They have also to share their information on their performance. And also availability of effective mechanism on public reporting uh, and also uh, mecha mechanism for uh, uh, com complaint uh, handling mechanisms. The government will uh, uh, already uh, have, uh, like in Indonesia, uh, the government have already uh, had a complaint handling mechanism, but uh, it is not too effective in the implementation. I think it is important in, in the future we try to improve this, uh, this criteria and indicators. I think uh, the criteria and indicators, uh, uh, it, is, uh, 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 it is my proposal, then uh, we can uh, discuss further in the uh, discussions. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Asbi. So the next speaker will be Pak uh, Dwi Mutaman, who is also a guest uh, for five minutes. So we have time for discussion. Okay, Pak Harry, uh, can can you open my share? Yeah, can you do it? Okay, got it. All right, uh, my thought today is uh, related with the criteria and indicator participatory governance in peatland restoration. Just for the sake of reminder to us, uh, good governance is actually practice of managing public affairs in ways that uh, in ways that the, all the activities should be participatory, consensus oriented, accountable, transparent, responsive, effective and efficient, equitable and inclusive, and that follow the rule of law. That that was the uh, good governance, and one of the important. One of the important uh, good governance uh, items is participation or social engagement. Social and uh, social engagement principles in in peatland restoration is very important uh, because restoration is carried out to satisfy not only conservation values, but also socio-economic values, including cultural ones. Therefore, it is very crucial to build a better relationship between a site where the restoration taking place and its stakeholders. Restoration needs social support so that any project, any pitland restoration project delivers important benefits to ecosystem and to society. Social engagement principles in pitland restoration is also very critical because conserving and restoring ecosystem very dependent on appreciation by society. Involvement all stakeholders to ensure ecosystem and society mutually prosper. Therefore, social engagement or education to the stakeholders are essential. I would like to share at least there are three uh, criteria for social engagement in uh, peatland restoration. First is recognize the rights, customs, and culture of communities in the site. The second criteria identifies special relationship with the site. The third criteria on social engagement is engage throughout the step of restoration, from planning and design, implementation, monitoring, documentation, evaluation, and reporting, maintaining ecological restoration projects. So this is the uh, criteria for social engagement in peatland restoration that I can I can share. And each criteria 
for example, the criteria one, at least three indicators that I thought is useful to be considered. First, the right custom and cultures are respected. Second indicator, comply with social, regional, national, and international laws in respect to the rights of communities. The third indicator, free and prior informed consent or FPIC is granted before restoration activities started. The second criteria identifies special relationship with the site, consists of three indicators. First indicator, sites of special cultural, ecological, economic, religious, and spiritual significance are identified. The second indicator, measures to protect such sites are agreed, documented, and implemented accordingly. The third indicator, activities that potentially impacted the sites should be consultation made through the EPIC process with local community. The third criteria consists of four indicators. First indicator, community granted FPIC for restoration activities. The third indicator, relevant and appropriate stakeholder identified. The third indicator, mutual understanding, agreement, and working mechanism achieved throughout restoration processes. The fourth indicator, dispute resolution mechanism mutually developed and implemented. So these uh, criteria indicator that I, I, I thought is very important to be considered. Uh, the final conclusion is social engagement is key to successful restoration project and social engagement should be started from the very early stage of restoration project. And, at, and the last point is at least three criteria are considered with few indicator for each criteria. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Padre, and also for being uh, on time. So we have uh, three uh, speakers already. And now I would like to invite uh, Marcel Silvius to provide comment or, or, or suggestion to the ideas coming from three panelists. So the floor is yours, Pa Marcel. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I think, uh, We've seen a whole range of. Hello. Yes, well, yeah. go ahead. We've seen a, a very interesting uh, set of uh, of presentations, uh, uh, all coming from different perspectives on uh, what entails good uh, peatland restoration and the uh, the governance mechanisms for that. I think. Uh, um, Often people think about uh, governance just within one dimension, like uh, uh, looking at it from the socio-political aspect. But of course, uh, governance deals with all the uh, different facets of, uh, of our society. It deals with economics, deals with finance, environmental governance, social governance, political governance. But then in, in peatlands also governance in terms of uh, landscape level or jurisdictional levels. Uh, we need to govern the water in the peatlands. And uh, we also need to govern the monitoring. And in the end, everything that needs to be governed is about processes. But if we talk about principles, criteria and indicators, a lot of it comes down, I think, <coughs> not just to outcome indicators, but particularly also to process indicators. And I think this came out of the, a lot of the presentations uh, that we, uh, we, we saw today, where for instance, Ibu Dia mentioned the need for uh, uh, common understanding. Uh, I think that needs also be to translated to similar levels of understanding between the, the stakeholders as a basis a, a, a very practical and basic basis for uh, for cooperation. I think uh, uh, several of the speakers mentioned the need for local and also linked to decentralization processes, but under national guidance, under national regulations, um, the need for accountability. Uh, so again, a lot of process-oriented indicators that 
uh, identify whether or not we're on the right track. Um, I think a lot of scientists think more about outcome oriented indicators, whereas I think if we talk about governance, it's the process that counts. Uh, a lot of the speakers mentioned we need to have the transparency in, uh, in the processes. Uh, and uh, we need to have the consultation process from the outset. Um, I think if you talk about consultation, it's not just consultation in the beginning of the process. It needs to be consultation throughout, from the very beginning, but also during the implementation and also in the monitoring of the results and the monitoring of the processes. In all these aspects, consultation is required. So consultation is not something that happens at the beginning of the project. Consultation is part and parcel of proper governance part and parcel of successful implementation. Without uh, consultation throughout the process, the project will fail. That's, that's I think, a given. Um, so to be able to come to a, a, a proper governance of these processes, one of the first steps that needs to be created and needs to be made is to come with all the stakeholders to a common vision. And we all know that every stakeholder group has different uh, ideas, has different priorities, different needs and requirements. So to come to a common vision is very difficult. But I think in peatlands there are a few items that are very clear where there needs to be a common interest. And that is, for instance, the prevention of disasters, such as fire and haze. Uh, um, the, we want all to have a productive landscape, one that provides profits, that provides livelihood, that provides a basis for our economy. I think uh, there are common, common ideas. And uh, so on these points, I think, even between the stakeholders where a company may have a different perspective than a local community, I think there are certain commonalities that we can build on in the development of the common vision. Um, but it needs to start also on a basis where stakeholder groups can have an equitable position in the processes. Uh, and where, and, and this is defined by simple items, which for instance, I haven't heard today yet, like uh, land tenure. We all know this is extremely important. I think it, it is included maybe in uh, Padui's mentioning of rights and indigenous people. So rights-based, a rights-based approach. But it starts with a government granting rights, clear rights, to the stakeholder groups, including to the communities in, for instance, uh, or through, for instance, land tenure. This land tenure needs to be clear and it needs to be long term. And that provides a basis for consultation and for, for fair uh, negotiation. I think uh, uh, we need to have clear commitments. We need to work towards clear commitments from all the stakeholder groups. And again, they need to be, these needs to be, need to be arranged around the common goals. Uh, we need to have clear planning processes that are well coordinated. Uh, the science base needs to be brought in, but also the local knowledge needs to be brought in to the planning. Um, and then I think on basis and through these processes, we can come to a definition of what appropriate restoration is because restoration means so many different things for different stakeholder groups. Uh, what is appropriate restoration in the, in the peatland? Is it just restoring the environment? I think uh, 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 it was mentioned uh, by some speakers. No, it's not just the environment. It, particularly, I think it is restoring the productivity of the landscape, restoring its capacity to serve 
the economy, to serve the local livelihood. Um, and then in relation to those re societal requirements, I think we need to define whether or not we need to go to partial rewetting of a peatland, partial reforestation or full reforestation or full rewetting. That all depends on, on the perspective of the stakeholders. In terms of commitments, we also need to have longer term financial commitments. And again, the, the finance field is rife with different views and different needs and criteria. And there are many players in this field from institutional finances, uh, impact finances or investors, uh, national and local banks, international finances, the government that comes in, the local communities that provide finance and provide uh, equ uh, equity also through their own involvement. Even It may not even be in, in terms of dollars, but it can be in terms of time. That is finance as well. Um, and then when we talk about local communities, we need to take the gender aspect into account where within the communities, uh, there is a lot of differentiation as well in terms of perspectives and views. So we must ensure that all different parts in the community can have their say in the processes as well. So women must be enfranchised in that process uh, other uh, vulnerable groups in the communities need to be brought into the planning and we need to see how we can bring them into, uh, a, uh, into the processes where they can benefit from, uh, from the, the landscapes that we are uh, aiming to restore. Um, so I think uh, that, that sketches a whole realm of governance items that we need to take into account when we talk about peatland restoration. One, uh, one additional item is cost effectiveness. Uh, we can talk about all kinds of nice things that we want to achieve in the landscape, but there must be, it must be cost effective. And one of the things that uh, many stakeholders always look at is uh, it must be cost effective in the sense that I must be able to make a profit out of it. And that is a very powerful argument. But I think there is also, there needs to be the recognition of the common, common values in peatlands, where uh, they provide ecosystem services to uh, our society at large. And when these ecosystem services and e these ecosystem values are being jeopardized by <coughs> degradation, it comes at a great cost to society. So profitability does not lie only in individual profitability or profitability for a particular stakeholder group, but it also lies in preventing major economic costs such as uh, we see coming from peatland fires that creates billions and billions of economic negative impact on various economic sectors, but also creates uh, uh, situations for local people that are just unbearable. People living months on end in dense smoke, uh, having the health of themselves and their children impacted by long-term uh, air pollution. I think uh, these are aspects often are not taken into account into the, uh, into the books into the uh, accounts that are made up at the end of the year of com companies or, or of government. But they are extremely important values that need to be brought in to the whole planning process. And uh, they provide a picture as well as to what kind of investments are justifiable. If we know that for every El Nino year, we can count on a major fire season in the peatlands of Indonesia uh, that creates tens of billions of dollars of uh, economic costs. Then I think it is very justifiable for a government to say, okay, uh, we are going to invest several billion dollars, not just a couple of hundred million dollars, but several billion dollars in peatland restoration in Indonesia. Uh, and I think there are a lot of other stakeholders, also international stakeholders, that want to assist Indonesia with that. 
uh, but it all comes down to bringing these kind of uh, interests into proper governance structures, uh, both at the national level, provincial levels. Uh, so these are the jurisdictional levels, but also then at the landscape level. And we need to recognize that to be able to cre create a common vision and to create a common, common goals, uh, we need to have new structures for governance in play. And these can be jurisdictional platforms. They can be landscape platforms where we bring stakeholders together throughout the process, not only in the beginning, but throughout the planning and implementation and the monitoring where all the information can be shared, all the experiences can be shared, the local knowledge can be shared, where, we, where the stakeholders can listen to each other and where uh, in the end common decisions can be made. I leave it to that uh, uh, and uh, uh, open the floor, I guess, uh, to yeah. questions. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Marcel. We have uh, nine minutes left before we back to the uh, the plenary. So there is a uh, one question in in the chat uh, box. In decentralized governance with different landscape and resource management authority, for instance, forestry, agriculture, plantation, ETR, BPN, local government, like in Indonesia, how do we best approach the institutionalization of the proposed indicators to all level of governance that can help to ensure effective implementation and integrated measure of pitland restoration? Thank you. Panelists, who is going to respond to this question? How to institutionalize the uh, the, the criteria indicator? Uh, Harry. What? Yeah, I'll speak, please. Yeah, uh, from my side, I think uh, one of the important uh, roles of the BRG is the coordination uh, roles uh, among the uh, uh, ministries. Uh, related ministries, uh, related agencies, uh, and also to the local governments and other stakeholders. So I think uh, one of the strategy that uh, already taken by the government is uh, to uh, uh, form the BRG, establish the BRG, and then uh, also take uh, the, the, uh, the roles uh, in uh, coordination uh, roles. But uh, I think uh, it is it is very important to to also uh, to to encourage the change of the culture uh, how to work uh, it, uh, for pitland restorations as mentioned by pa Marcel it is uh, related to many stakeholders then uh, it is important to work together in the collaboration uh, uh, in the collaboration platform. Uh, 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 engage all stakeholders from the beginning until the monitoring. So I think the change of the uh, how to work is very important. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I would like to add what has been mentioned. Um, I think yeah, please. the process of development of criteria and the indicator should be multi-stakeholder processes. Yeah. Uh, from from all level of government, from all of, uh, of all level of uh, stakeholder types from community level until to official levels. And the second one, of course, uh, with the principles of uh, participatory processes is very important, uh, considering all the inputs from a variety of uh, uh, stakeholders and yeah. uh, enabling stakeholders to say what they, they're thinking about the criteria indicator. So I think the, the, the very important uh, process is make sure that development of criteria mm -hmm. in, and indicator is through process of multi-stakeholder and participatory. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Nadia, please. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I'm uh, agree with uh, Pak Hasbi and uh, Pak Dwi. And then the key is collaboration with, between institution in the land management uh, will be uh, developed and cultivated through synergic 
and mutually uh, reinforcing cooperation. I think uh, while still yeah, providing the work unit with the independence in managing the uh, the uh, repressive sector or the field, I think still also in the in the uh, in the field level. So I think cooperation between institutions is expected to the uh, foster the division of the rules and for each in, in this institution in order to prevent duplication or program or even struggle in the uh, for rules between institution. And then I think as uh, Marcel mentioned, this is not only about the, the activities also, it is about the budgeting. It is about the who is will work in the, the field. And then, uh, yeah, I think uh, regarding to the indicator, uh, indicator in the beginning, we uh, it is developed together with them and then see what the each level can work uh, together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other question? Before I let uh, Marcel uh, respond, we were waiting. Uh, Marcel, you have any uh, uh, respond to the, the comment, please? Um, yeah, but the, the, the question is about how to institutionalize uh, the, the, the the proposed the indicators. Indicator. Yeah, so I think uh, uh, I, I mentioned uh, what I think that is needed because we need to work at the landscape level. We need to work at provincial jurisdictional level and at national level. Uh, it is important that indeed the whole set of indicators is kind of uh, institutional. And I think Indonesia already has this. Of course, in the Kala S uh, procedures, the environment impact assessment and uh, procedures in Indonesia, in, in principle, that already provides a very nice framework for this. But that's often seen as a process that just ends up with a little report. Once a report is that, it's kind of a, a, a greenwash brief to continue with your development. And I think. Uh, what we discussed today and what all the speakers mentioned is no, uh, this needs, uh, this is a longer term process. It's not a matter of producing a report, but it's a matter of providing or creating a common understanding and a common goal and common way forward uh, for all the different stakeholder groups in the landscape. And you can only do that by institutionalizing the processes that we discussed I think what you need for that is a landscape platform for stakeholders. Of course, governed by the government, uh, either at district level or that sometimes peatlands will cross district boundaries. Now you need to have it at the higher level of, of governance, but where all these different stakeholders can be brought together and where they on a regular basis, long-term, so, coming together multiple times every year to, to share the lessons learned and to review whether the processes actually are, are functioning appropriately uh, and being implemented appropriately, then uh, by, by having them also monitoring the processes as, as a multi-stakeholder platform, I think uh, you can institutionalize this process. But I don't think that at the moment in the Indonesian regulatory framework, such landscape platforms are recognized. So I do think there's a little bit of homework here for the Indonesian government, specifically for peatlands where you need to work, as Pabudi mentioned in the beginning of this uh, webinar, you need to work at the hydrological unit level, which in uh, peatlands can cover hundreds of thousands of hectares. So, and then you will have tens or often yeah, up to 50 villages involved in one landscape. And all, all these stakeholders need to be brought together. Um, so how do you do that? What, what structure could the government provide uh, linked to the current uh, uh, regulatory uh, frameworks? Uh, but what additional uh, aspects are required to enable uh, due recognition of such uh, stakeholder processes in the in the planning and in the decision making, as well as in the monitoring. So I I, I suggest strong emphasis on creation of such multi-stakeholder platforms at the landscape level, but uh, later also 
lands, multi, multiple landscape platforms coming together in jurisdictional platforms. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, uh, Marcel. We have 20 seconds left, so I will not open for a new discussion. So I will, uh, Sonia actually uh, provide some wrap up. So I'll uh, read it during the plenary. So thanks uh, all for participating in the governance aspect of Canadian Indicator. Thank you, Bahiri. Thank you. Thank you, Bahiri. Thank you. Thank you, Marcel.